Genetic Reflections project started about two years ago um, with discussions between myself, Aniscope, and Aniscope student Angela. The Biotech Center approached me and said, hey, we got this 40-foot wall and we'd like you to do something with it. The initial idea was to silkscreen genomics, sequences possibly, or stem cells or images onto mirrors. Early on, Anna and I met and I came up with and mapped up some ideas. It then morphed into a more layered approach and have it be more experiential. We're talking about like, why don't we come up with some kind of etching or sandblasting idea. So it was sort of a process that evolved over time. The major model organisms that we have in the piece are E. coli from bacteria to Drosophila, the fruit fly, the C. elegans, the zebrafish. NSF funded this work and initially I didn't put in a very large budget, but then they asked me to put in $50,000 into my grant, which is an odd request <laughs> from a federal agency. Um, and then they funded not only my science, but this amazing art piece. The lighting on the mirrors creates light on the opposite side of the wall with patterning and that hadn't been something I realized would happen until afterwards but in a way it brightens up the hallway even more so it's a happy accident. Geez, if you don't have the light on you can't really read the names of the model organisms and so they start getting the idea that lighting matters not only in art but in things like microscopy and how we try to see things in the life sciences as well as in the arts. I run with Tom Zinn in the teaching lab. So we have K through 12 kids come in um, and we run workshops with them, specifically DNA based. We start them at the fountain. We discuss that, um, that macromolecule and the shape of it and how it runs. And then as we walk down the hall, we talk about those letters. And especially if you have like the little kids, they're like, wait a second, these are the four letters that we just talked about. And like some of them will like literally like stop. And they'll like, they'll read <laughs> like for 30 seconds. They'll like read out loud all of the letters and they're like, the fact that they can interact with it so closely I think was a really big deal with this art exhibit. In addition to the 40 foot long space that we have currently housing the permanent genetic reflections, we have a ready-made traveling piece as well that were sized down into 24 inch by 24 inch framed pieces. These would go to science centers, universities, art galleries, museums. We want to be able to have as many people possible have the opportunity to see this and the correlation between art and science and to literally see themselves within the artwork. Public art is important in this building in particular because it gives our visitors a chance to see ideas that otherwise they might not be able to see. So a lot of things in science you can't see visually with the naked eye. Like if you ask students if you can see DNA with the naked eye, they say no, but then here you are, you're literally walking by it. So it takes something abstract and makes it concrete.